Hello and welcome back. Okay, here's the reset and clock circuit. Now it's got three different states, the single step, the visual speed clock, and what's intended to be the high speed clock. And then it's got the reset state, which once entered into the preloaded count we've got on here, it will take that many clocks before it drops out of the reset state. So what I'd like to look at today is the high speed clock. Now, the high speed clock, I basically want that to drive the processor as fast as I can stably make it run. But I don't know what that rate is yet, so we need to be able to have a circuit that could be configurable in some way. So I could get a whole series of crystals that would allow me to, uh, to swap them out, but that's likely to be quite costly, and I'll end up with um, a lot of crystals that go to waste. And they don't come in that fine a granularity either. So what I'd like to do is build something called a clock divider circuit, which will give us some flexibility and configurability, but without needing too many extra components. So this is from a past mailbag. It's a five megahertz crystal. So I've used one of these in the UART video series I've been running in parallel, although it was a slightly different form factor. But this is a, an oscillator, so it doesn't need any separate circuitry like a, a plain crystal would. So we've got power, ground, signal. I'm going to rotate it 90 degrees. Power, ground and signal coming out here. Let's fire up the oscilloscope and see what that looks like. Okay, so that's the 5 megahertz we expected. It's similar to the other one. We've got quite a bit of bounce on it. Let's see what we can do. Brings ground there. That makes no difference. Let's see what the data sheet says. Okay, so this data sheet seems to cover a variety of devices. Okay, so this has got 0.01 UF between power and ground, but it also has this on the output. 30 picofarad. Let's take a look. Right, so it's 30 picofarad. And then that's 10 nanofarad. Doesn't seem to have made any difference. Ah, oh, but it's a capacitor on the output. That does seem to help. Okay, well, we can always come back to that. So what I'd like to do is divide this circuit down. And just as we did on the UART, I'm going to start off by just dropping a counter chip in there and, and hooking it all up. Power on ground. So that was the parallel load and the master reset. So that's the countdown we're pulling high. And then we'll feed our clock into the count up. I'm going to change the trigger to be off channel 2 because that should stabilise what we're seeing. Okay, so that looks like the clock divided by two. We can move this around to some of the other outputs. Yeah, it's four. That should be all the way down to 16. And of course we could use the carry output. But what we're seeing there is rather than a square wave, we just see it drop at the carry point for one half tick. OK, now what we want to do here is make a divider, though. So I'm going to switch to counting down. So that should pretty much look the same. But what I want to do is take out that parallel load and we'll hook that up. Right, so there are four parallel load inputs. So it's bit zero, bit 
one, two, and then bit three. Right, so purple trace is looking at the carry line. The set value for a counter, which we then tick down until it hits zero, and then we load again. So currently we're setting it to 15, so we're pretty much seeing what we saw before, since the borrow happens when we pass zero, not at zero. So if I move this, it becomes eight, then the four line, there we go. Right, that was not the right place. But unlike before when we were just selecting the output bits from a counter, we've actually got a binary value here which is effectively a division of that clock rate. Okay, that last package I opened sees a nice little four-way dip switches. Now which way round are these? I really should have a pull-up resistor here, but these are 7.4 series inputs, and they're pretty good at doing it themselves when left floating. Okay. All right, zero to one doesn't make much difference. So we're getting five megahertz. Yeah, five megahertz both ways. But of course, we're saying we count from our initial value down to zero. So one down to zero, that's a divide by one. Divide by zero is uh, a mathematical debate, but it's clearly not doing anything different here. Two, on the other hand, it gives us two and a half megahertz. Three gives us 1.6 megahertz. And I imagine I'm about to stick up a nice little table of all the divisions of this. Let's go all the way up to 15. Let's go down to 333 kilohertz from 5 megahertz. That's pretty good. But what we've got here is not a very neat output. I'd like to see something that looks more like a square wave than uh, this very imbalanced line that the purple wire is becoming. Let's see what we can do. I figure if we feed the output from here into a flip-flop, that would produce quite a neat output. But the toggle flip-flop, that would take me two chips. Yeah, I can do effectively a toggle flip-flop with another counter chip. Okay, so that's the least significant bit. Oh, that's nice. So we've still got a little bit of a dip at the start, but we've got something that looks a little bit more like a square wave there. I might try uh, taking the output there and feeding it into a, a Schmidt trigger or something. Right, can we tidy this up at all before moving on? Two wire link. Okay, that's quite nice. When I first started on this board, I thought. Uh, I'll probably just fit it all on two breadboards, but I'm probably going to fill all of this up now. Right at the very start of this project, I thought that the clock would probably just stay on one breadboard. Folly. Okay, so in theory, we can finish this circuit up by getting this clock line over here. So now we can select between the three options. Now if I power it on, we don't automatically go into reset state. I've been thinking about that. If I put a capacitor between my reset line and ground, then I think that will cause it to take a moment for this uh, resistor to pull it up, which will push the set reset latch to um, start in the right position. Okay, didn't have the desired effect. Oh, hang on. I know that's working, but this is defaulting to the high speed clock, so it drops 
out of reset as fast as the eye can see. Right, can we do something similar over here? I expect we probably can. Yeah, that is bang on. That's made me realise we probably want a selectable switch for the default power on state. Okay, so this eight latch chip is only being used for two latches. I said I wanted to try and simplify that a little bit. Now I was digging through the list of chip options we've got and I found this. This is the 74LS74. The number pattern there made it stand out to me a little bit. But this has two D-type flip-flops. And a D-type flip-flop is basically it's a, it's a data storage. It's essentially what we've got eight of here but that's going to be a smaller package chip. Let's pop that out and see if we can replace it. I got this um, 74 series chip selection kit off Amazon right when I first started this project. It's actually been pretty handy for uh, trying out chips that uh, hadn't already ordered a bunch of. Okay, now the inputs are there. And there. So the clear lines are active low. Let's pull those up. And these clock lines need to be cross connected. Okay, what have I done wrong here? Okay, that's not the clock. Yeah, that's right. Awesome. Okay, I am pretty close now to this being integratable back into the main build. I want to tidy all of these wires up a little bit, but there's one last little bit of functionality I think I'm going to add in before we do that. But I think this is enough for today. It's always difficult for me to gauge how long a video is going to end up, and they almost always come out longer than I expect. So I feel this one's short, which means it might be a reasonable length. Now the crucial thing about this circuit is we've got an electronic selection between the clock modes. And that's going to come in really handy in a future video where we add some circuitry that's going to control these automatically. Okay, hope you found this interesting. Thanks a lot for watching and I will see you again soon. Goodbye.